Hi guys, it's Jenny and Paul, and Paul with uh, the Go Box and Van Gogh Artist Bar and Studio. We're here to teach you a live Friday night live painting class. Absolutely. And, and this we're... time we're not painting canvas. No, we're not. And this time this is our first time in our new studio. Yeah, new space. As yeah. You can probably see this 110-year-old hundred, brick building. We were just talking about this spot right here. <laughs> We're like, what are we, what are we gonna do there? Hmm. Over there? So we're also um, trying to figure out what we're gonna hang on the back wall there. Yeah, it's such a beautiful wall. We don't want to cover everything up, and so we were kind of thinking maybe some cool uh, marquee letters that are lit up or something interesting beyond just paintings, because the whole our whole studio is always filled with paintings. We have paintings yeah. everywhere, and we're doing paintings, so I think we can hang something other than paintings back there. Well, we don't really have any painting. We didn't really have any paintings in our home video studio. We just had, the giant elves. We had gimmick, gimmicky stuff. <laughs> yeah. It feels empty without my guitars hanging back there, but I don't. That's really, what you put a guitar back there. You got plenty of them at home. But I don't really feel like hanging one onto the brick. That would, yeah. yeah. Who knows? We'll but figure anyway, it out. We'll this uh, it out. space is uh, it's about twenty five hundred square feet, twenty four hundred square feet. Somewhere in that neighborhood. And um, it used to be a ballroom in Sherwood, Oregon. Yep. Uh, it's upstairs. Inside it has very much a New York loft vibe. We're just in a little, uh, actually a little room. And beyond us out there is a giant room where you can see that it was a ballroom and there's like 12 windows and gorgeous fur floors. It is the neatest space and we love it so much. And we're hoping to be able to run some public classes here once things settle down and we get paint on the ceiling. The ceiling needs to be painted because it's like it was painted a, a really ugly brown color by the landlord. Okay, <laughs> they just did something. The to get some, they just wanted to get I something. I hate to on toss the them under the bus because they yeah. are so nice. They're the best. But it's just like coming and we're like, yeah, that color needs to go. And um, so yeah, just little details like that. You know what we should do is once we get done done with that stuff, we should do like a video like tour. Of the space. Yeah. Once this is actually the, the first space we've ever. We have all the junk out of there. <laughs> this is what our, our fourth space we've had over the years. Yeah, you're right. Four. And this is the first one we've ever acquired that actually had a stage built in. Yeah, it has a stage built in. Um, I'm like, I don't have to build a stage. Probably from the ballroom days. I imagine a piano was up there, and it's just a neat. 110 years old. The uh, friend of mine actually had rented it before we did for a dance studio, and her daughter swears it's haunted. So we're kind of waiting for our little ghost friends to appear. That would be very cool if they did, but if they don't want to make an appearance, I'm okay with that too. <laughs> so let's go ahead and talk about our project today before we keep yammering on. Josie says hi. Hi, Josie. Hi, Josie. Thanks for checking in. Um, do you want to zoom in on what we're doing? Let's do it. Okay, let's go Whoa. ahead. And then I'm going to do this fancy thing. Magic. Whoa. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> okay, so we are painting these adorable uh, we just call them forest ornaments, and uh, there's, I always do them in a set of three, I just feel like three is a good number. The thing I love about these is, uh, I hang them over, like at Christmas time, I don't know if I can even show this without pouring the wine, I hang them over a bottle of wine, like that, and uh, give it, like, the bottle of wine as a gift to a friend or family member, and it just kind of adds an extra special touch. There was part of me. There was part of me. Don't was thinking, interrupt oh, me. Sorry. I was thinking you just like it was like we could hang them over everybody's individual bottle of wine like a little charm. But then I'm like, well, most people don't just rock back with a bottle of wine at a, a holiday. Uh, holiday. I don't know. I haven't been to. I don't know. Some of our parties they might. Yeah. But anyway, um, <laughs> there was a, a brand of wine that was called La Chouette. Oh, that's right. Which uh, is yeah. French for the owl, mm -hmm. and the label was very cool, artsy picture of an owl. So that would be super cool. Do you match it to your wine? So but I'm anyway, gonna, I'm going to ask people real quick. Okay. Um, I, I sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt again. It wasn't intentional. There was a pause, and I tried to get a word in. <laughs> We're trying brand new broadcasting equipment tonight for the first time live. So not only are we in a new space, we have all new cameras. We have a new video and audio mixing board and then we have a new device that sends all that stuff to YouTube so you guys can watch us and I just want to make sure that you guys can hear us good. Yes and I'm kind of rolling my eyes because we've had so many weird issues with video equipment yeah. that if there is one I'm gonna go bang my head against the brick wall there. <laughs> That would be good video. I mean, people, it might go viral. It would go viral, yeah. yeah it might go viral. <laughs> okay, 
So we have uh, a little bee, the owl, which is a barn owl, and the cute little mushroom, which we're gonna do today or tonight as the sun is setting here. I'm gonna turn the sound off on my phone because people are... We have some even. plans tomorrow that we're kind of ironing out with some friends and they're probably saying, hey, make sure you pick no, up a it was, bottle No, we of also have political memes we send back and forth, so <laughs> that was... <laughs> Actually, no, it was Leanne telling, telling us that the actor who um, was Black Panther died. What? Yeah, that's what her text just said. Oh my goodness. So I don't know any details, but... Breaking news, everybody. Yeah, breaking news, that's sad. Okay, wow, that's a... That's a sad... I wish you had checked that message after our video. I know, I'm sorry. He's such a young guy, too. Yeah, All right. yeah. All right, well, awful. let's power through. Okay, let's talk about supplies. So you're going to need your five paint colors. Nothing more, nothing less. Um, if you do want to add in um, one of the other colors we've shipped you in the past or other colors you have at home, please feel free to do that. You can add the, You can make a blue B if you want. That would be very cute. That would Something be cute. I would do. Um, so on our, oh, let me uh, talk about these. We've got black, white, our ruby red, sapphire blue, and daffodil yellow. These are just primary colors. We just gave them fancy names because yep. we can and we do that. <laughs> You're also going to want a white Posca marker. Mm -hmm. So this is an acrylic paint marker. These are awesome. That's how I got all the little tiny stars and details, how I did the wings, how I did the little feathers on the face. So those are really a good thing to have and these come in all kinds of different colors. They're expensive though. <laughs> so if you like really like them, I highly recommend you just slowly invest in a set or well, just go all out. How much it. are they? Uh, I think they retail around $5 each. Well, that's not too bad. Not too bad unless you're buying like a set of 48. <laughs> yeah, yeah but compared to like a Copic marker yeah. or a Prismacolor, uh, it's kind of in really, the same ballpark. Yeah. But they, they probably don't last as long. I'm just guessing. I think yeah. that's about... They, they, might, they, they might be a little more... Little they don't last as long as the others, but... I don't know. Uh, you're going to want a little cup of water for cleaning your brushes. And brush-wise, we're just gonna, going to use two small brushes. So this, uh, on our regular videos, we call this the medium brush. That's what we're going to use. And then we're going to use our tiny little brush. And that's for detail work. Cool. But we're going to be using this Posca marker a lot. So if you bought this and you've never opened it you'll want to do that now um, before we get started because we use it right off the bat after we paint our um, solid black background on each of these stop that i'm <laughs> showing annoying. them what to do yeah so you you do shake it up take the plastic off obviously and then it's got one of those little um felt tips that you have to depress it several times on a piece of paper or something some kind of surface that you don't mind getting paint on in order to get the paint to flow every once in a while a giant blob of um, paint will come out. Don't panic. I usually will just use use that. I'll usually like do. I do it on my palette. You I don't... depress it on the palette, and then I um, will kind of dip in that little puddle that came out because it has happened a lot. I've never used one of these before. Oh, this will be fun for you. Yeah. All right, let's toast. toast. Hopefully, you all have some kind of beverage. We're drinking Sawtooth Riesling from Idaho right now. Can you see it there? It's so pretty. In my cup. Cheers. Cheers. Friday night. Woo. Pinky up. Pinky up. Okay, well, I'm gonna move these aside and I will reference them as we go. Sounds I'm gonna good. have us start with the B, but what I want us to do first is paint all three of these black. So you don't wanna put your twine in it yet. And make sure you just kinda of dust them off if needed. Every once in a while they have a little sawdust on them and they're very woodsy smelling, I love them. I don't even know what kind of wood it is. So let's take our medium sized brush, go ahead and dip it in your water, swish it around, kind of wake up the brush bristles. I'll pull this onto the screen here. I'm not used to it being so zoomed. So the zoom is good though for this particular painting. It really is. This particular grouping of paintings. Do we want to get rid of the picture in picture or do you want people to look at, now well, we're going to be looking down, so they're just going to be looking at the top yeah, of our heads. Yeah, you can get rid of that. I don't we'll know. see you in a bit. <laughs> okay, so I'll move these more centrally located. So, uh, you know, I dipped a, my paper towel in a little bit of the water and used it, and you can see how much sawdust came off of mine. That looks gross. We don't need to see that. Well, no, but I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, so let's take our medium-sized brush. Go ahead and swirl it in some black. And then I'm just gonna carefully black paint each of these. You just be, have to be careful around the edges. You kinda want a nice circle there. 
You can bring it all the way to the edge. That's usually what I do. Oh no, I say that and I didn't. This one had bark around it, so I wanted to leave that. But some of the other ones, like this one didn't really have much, so I went all the way to the edge. If you have good um, bark around the edges, you can leave a little slim bit of that showing. These are funny because I buy them from the same manufacturer and I like them because they seem pretty consistent in size and shape. Every once in a while in the past I used to buy these a lot through different, just I'd find them online and I, I tried several different brands and they were pretty all out of sorts shape wise. Like you might get a pear shaped one, you might get a round one and then the actual size of them was too much of a variance. And so this particular manufacturer I really like. They seem very consistent. But I have noticed that every once in a while, one will have aggressive bark like this and then mix in with others that are not so aggressive. So that's all right. A little bit of difference is good. Make it a little unique. So this uh, one thing you'll notice if you've never painted on wood before, which if you guys have done the GoBox kit for a while, a lot of you have already painted on wood because we offer that quite a bit. But uh, you'll notice it absorbs into it fast and dries fast. And that can be both a blessing and a curse. For me, I tend to like it. But if we're ever doing anything that requires a little blending, then, then it's the curse. <laughs> but for what we're doing today, it is most welcome. So I'm actually using a lot of water while I'm doing this. Oh, you're always going to do that. You're going to do yours like watercolor style. Like no, I'm oh, not. It's I just, see. it's you're just. Bringing, you're showing the wood grain. So yours actually looks kind of like wood that's been singed a little bit. Yeah. We should show it. I was having some difficulties with it actually. Let's show yours well, for those people who are following along and maybe want to do one or two or all of them. Finish this With up more of a quick. stain type of look. I think you did that last time we did the wood rounds. I did, yes. <laughs> uh, when in doubt, just uh, uh. All right, here we go. Okay, I'm really sad about the actor passing away. I know, it's really sad. Okay, there you go. It's always when it's very young and you don't expect it. Well, it's sad no matter what. But, uh, okay, so here is Paul's, he did his, like, a stain. So he mixed a lot of water in his paint. It looks like he paints water on the wood first and then mix, then paints a thin layer of paint. Then well, paints then, a thin layer of paint on that and then you then use then your paper towel. Then I add, add water. Add water on top. <laughs> then the paper so towel. This, it does end up look, looking like um, it's been burned with, like, a wood burning tool or some, or just an open flame of some kind. So that's kind of cool. I'll set that aside. That will be neat to see in the end, the difference um, between those colors. All I can say is that particular technique, lots of water. Lots of water, very little paint. Yep. So this one has the bark around it, so I am just coming right up to the edge. Well, this one I'm getting much more of that uh, aggressive, kind of singed. So you can see more wood rings. Yeah. Don't they say the amount of rings is how old the, in years the tree is? Yeah, apparently they put this on... This one's an old one that I'm painting on. It's a little old skinny tree. Old new, or new ring per year, I guess is the That's theory. Neat. I mean, I'm not a arborist, so I can't say with 100% certainty, but... I just, uh, my daughter just got me addicted to Animal Crossing on the Nintendo Switch, and... All day long I was going around the little island I live on, collecting wood for crafting benches and wardrobes and fishing poles and axes and things like that. So it's it is funny. a good break from reality. Sometimes. You know what? I have had, I've had a little bit of, I'm going to be honest and be real here, I've had a little mild depression going on just because things are so different and then you know you'll go onto Facebook, which I just finally stopped going on. Um, it's just, it's so negative, so much negativity, so much fighting everywhere about the election. And so I definitely feel that and, um, doing something like 
well, painting obviously is very, very therapeutic, but I do a lot of painting to the point that I almost get a little bit tired of it and um, not super inspired. And uh, so yeah, playing Animal Crossing was, it's just a super easy, happy, happy game. There's nothing upsetting in it at all. It's very fulfilling. So there's my shout out to Nintendo. <laughs> Not a sponsor. Not a sponsor yet. <laughs> Maybe one day. We'll paint Animal Crossing characters on these. All right, let's show the one that you just last did. So here's uh, the one that has more of a stained look and you can really see those wood rings quite a bit. I do like that. I'm curious to see how your, uh, how your little figures we paint on them are going to turn out. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Yeah. So, d throughout this live video, you can pause it anytime. Mm -hmm. Anytime. And if you need, like, if we're moving on and yours aren't dry yet. Josie says Animal Crossing is amazing. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, I'm finding there's a lot of fans. I really, really love it. It's, like, I got up this morning, I was super happy to be the first one awake in the house, because I went down and turned it on, and... And Let's be honest, some bells. The, the last time you were really into a video game was Mortal Kombat 2 on the Sega Genesis. In the 1990s. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> I was very young then. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Okay, so these are drying. Um, the first one I painted, I think, I think it was, I don't know which one was the first one I painted. I'm guessing it's this one because it looks drier, but I can't rewind and see. <laughs> So uh, that's the one I'm gonna start with for the B. So prepare yourself. The B will be the first one we're doing. It's super duper easy. All three of these go really fast. Even this owl, which looks super detailed, is pretty darn easy to do. I'll say that now, then I'll like, run into flaws. No, knock on wood, knock on wood. <laughs> okay, right. you're ready to? Yes, Let's I clean am. our brushes off. Let's do I already it. did mine. And this is, we won't be using this brush anymore, I don't think. Really? I might be lying, but I think this is it. Not even I for the owl? I think this is it. I know we don't use it at all for these other two. Um, let's go ahead and pull this B over here. The little strings, I put them on yesterday. It's, they're, they always are curling and getting in the way when I'm trying to show them. Uh, so the B has, we use yellow and we use uh, blue to make the green. Yellow and blue will make green. Mm -hmm. And then some different like orange and red for the flower centers. I'm taking my shoes off. Oh, that's a good idea. I'm going to take mine off too. Oh, feels good. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull aside your driest circle. And if you need to pause and hair dry, that's a great way to do it. First thing first, think about where this hole is drilled because that's the gravitational pull is going to make your your B hang so you want it to be lined up with that otherwise your B will be like going at an angle <laughs> that way or that way, which I think would be okay with a B but some of the other things you definitely want to have them lined up pretty good I'm gonna take my Posca marker first Posca marker. okay I'm actually and gonna use the back of our coaster yeah yeah I, we don't really have any scratch paper other than like this Paul <laughs> I can tell mine needs to be shaken. This one I used a lot in the last video I did with the India ink owl. So I may actually end up needing to open a new one. Uh, I'm very frugal. <laughs> so I'm going to use it till it dies. Even on Animal Crossing, man, I'm so frugal. I'm saving all the money. All right. So we're, first, what, what we're going to do is I have the instructions here and you can oh. see that we draw a snowman and instead of doing a perfect circle on the bottom it comes down and it makes a point and that will form the little bee body so just under the circle I'm going to drop down maybe a quarter of an inch just make a dot just a place marker I like to start with a dot so that you don't get too stressed out and this one let's start by making a sort of a uh, rainbow shape and I'm just dotting it out so I'm doing little dots because that's a little easier to do, especially these pins tend to splatter a bit when I you can drag see that. them. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the dotting works perfect. Oh, did perfect. I be too big? Mine's gonna end up a bumblebee, probably. That's okay. 
So then I'm going to just intentionally. go almost straight across. It's a slight curve. So this is like a circle that's been squashed on the bottom. Looks like a minto. <laughs> okay, so... Also not a sponsor. Let's pay attention to where the the tail or the, the stinger part of this bumblebee should end. There is a little flower vine that comes underneath. So this is about a quarter inch of space. So I'm going to just kind of eyeball and make a dot. I know I don't want to go below about that point. Okay, so now the middle part of the body is a little bit wider. I'm just going to make what looks like parentheses at first, like sentence parentheses. Easy enough. Just dot them in. And kind of come across like we did on that top one. So it's like a squished circle on the bottom. Yeah. I've got a Cute. fat bee. I like it. I think the fatter, the cuter. <laughs> Too bad that doesn't work for me. He's been walking <laughs> out. <laughs> so then this is when you can make a nice chubby little, let's see, the bug parts. There's the thorax, the abdomen, and what part is this? Is this the thorax? Well, that, I think that's the, the thorax. thorax. Yeah. And then there's the head. And so head, head, abdomen, thorax. I think that's how it goes. You gotta remember biology. That was a long time ago. So we do want this to come down to a slight point. It's not a sharp point. This is the happy bee. It's not going to, uh, not going to sting us too bad. No, I did pretty good. I think <laughs> I feel pretty happy. With you that. did pretty good. Yeah, good. I am and not the really refined sure. precision drawer that you are. So the cool thing is, if you mess up at all with this, you do want to dry the Posca marker because it is paint and then paint black over it and start over so you can do that anytime all right what I'm gonna do now is make the little antenna and you can see on here they just come out the top part of the head on either side and just curl out if you want to do something fun and I'm gonna draw on some scratch paper but it's not gonna show up. if you want to do like a curly Q type of antenna you are more than welcome no it shows up here no. you're more than welcome to do that I've got a lot of so, shadows going uh, what should somebody do if they accidentally dip their Posca marker in their water? Oh, I would wipe it off. That, <laughs> that could happen. I could see that being happen, mm -hmm. happening. With me, it would be wine. Um, wipe it off really good. Just get it nice and dry. And then depress it again to get the, the paint to flow again. And you'll want to really get paint flowing to get the water out of there. Mm -hmm. So that probably work. scribble on a scratch piece yeah, of scribble, paper a bit. Scribble and... it out a bit. There's enough paint in there. You're not going to run out. So, like this one I've been using for a long time. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, hopefully that works. Let us know. I haven't had encountered that myself, but I could see that being a real and true thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and make the little antenna. And you know what? I'm going to do this one a little different. I am going to do the curly Q thing. So, you are Just drawing this time. press really lightly. Yeah, press really lightly because you will see oh, that see. the pen splatters a little bit. It bleeds. Mine's not bleeding, but it might bleed on yours because you did the, you had to go extra. Yours is actually bleeding a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, I've got a it lot of... It doesn't look bad, though. No, Let's show. it looks fuzzy. Fuzzy B. Yeah, so his, is, his pen is just bleeding out around the edges just a little bit, and it doesn't look bad or wrong at all. No, it's, it's just, just a layout. It's just going to look different than the original, mm -hmm. and I always think that's a cool thing when people do that. It's just a layout. I'll punish you later. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Okay. No comment. So <laughs> we're gonna draw the wings now, and I'll show you how this looks in this Apparently, phase. Drying the Posca marker, I mean everything works. Yay! That's awesome. Glad to hear that. Yeah. Okay, so the wings come out from the body down. They're, if I were to draw a straight line from here to here, they're pretty closely lined up to the bottom of the stinger, just a little bit short. But it's okay if you go a little longer or even a little shorter. I mean, I I didn't measure any B or look at any. B. I just kind of made this up as I went along. So let's do it. We're gonna go, we're gonna draw two teardrop shapes that come out. And again, press light. Press light, use the very tip of this pen. There. There's one, one and done. Woo! With that one. So proud they of come myself. out of the right here, right where the head meets the abdomen. And I just try to match this one up. It's never gonna be perfect. But we'll just say, oh, there's a gust of wind, it blew its wing. I need to not laugh while I do this. A little gust of wind blew its wing around. Oh, I see. <laughs> Actually, doing a bee is kind of funny because what happened right before I got here 
my poor little <laughs> my poor little character on Animal Crossing. Um, I shook a tree to get some tree branches to craft an axe, and I got stung by a bunch of wasps. <laughs> that was sad. And then you got accused of being a zombie. <laughs> Yeah, one of the villagers did that. Okay, so now we have the other part of the wing that comes up here. These We continue over the body later, but obviously after we paint the body on. So for now, this is how it's going to oh, look. Oh, I already put the... Well, you just need to not skip ahead. <laughs> it's okay. You'll be figuring this out as you go. Actually, it's fine. You can paint right over those. Yeah, I'm not too worried about it. <gasps> Sip of wine. Okay, let's talk about painting the body in. So the head ends up being gray. Um, it could have been left solid black, but I felt, oh, you know, I'm gonna do something slightly different from the background. So I, I made it like a deep charcoal gray, even though it probably looks black in the original, but it is gray. Is it? Okay. Um, we want to not use pure yellow because painting pure yellow on this black would turn kind of greenish. Yeah. And it's just because of the, the pigment with the paint and how opaque and not opaque it is. Take your littlest brush and let's mix white and yellow. And you don't need to dip the brush in water. I know we do that a lot, but for this little work we're doing right now, you don't have to. I want to make a color that's definitely yellow, but just maybe a shade or two lighter than this. So see if I paint this next to it, you can see the difference. It looks like a lemon. Actually, it kind of reminds me of the color of like margarine. <laughs> Doesn't it kind of look like Fair that? enough. Yeah. Well, so, I've got a lot of paint on my brush from mixing. You can see that big glob there. It's like potato salad, mustard yeah, and mayonnaise. Yeah, mustard and mayo mixed <laughs> together. <laughs> it is summertime after all. So I, I usually will kind of twist my brush and pull it, and that will knock off a lot of the excess paint without having to wash your brush and all that. And then I'll just re-dip the tip of the bristles in some fresh paint. And let's paint the abdomen in. The whole thing? Yep, the whole thing. And this does get two coats but we have to wait to do the second coat. So we're just gonna do the first coat on each of these parts that we paint the yellow on. And then we're gonna come back and hit it up with a second coat. I, see, I imagine that once this is dry. I feel like it could be a little more yellow. So my second coat, I might actually mix a little more yellow in, or you could actually, even glaze it with solid yellow. That's what I was gonna, actually was starting to I was going to say, I was going to say. I was going to say, I was going to interject. <laughs> okay, so I have two black stripes and three yellow stripes if you count the abdomen. So let's do this middle stripe. And oh, all I, I do is, let's see, I'm going to come and leave a little space and I'm just kind of pulling as I go across, pulling towards myself. So I have a question. Are bumblebees... Black stripe? I mean, do they have black stripes or yellow stripes? I think they have yellow Are stripes. Are they black with yellow stripes? I think they're black with yellow stripes. That's, that's the way I, I thought. That's the way how I interpret them, yeah. One more fuzzy yellow, and then I leave the, the tip of the tail <laughs> stinger white, because we actually fill that in with fuzzy Posca marker lines. I think you're talking about the butt area. The butt, bumblebee butt, so cute. I love bumblebees. You can actually pet them. Greta always says, our daughter, when we're out in the, we took her to the Oregon Gardens and there were bumblebees everywhere. And I got a picture of her petting one, it was kind of cute. Kind of cute. So let's go ahead and make a gray while this dries. So do wash your brush off. If you need to change your water, just pause us because we did start off with black paint, so our water is gonna look like that. I usually don't change my water throughout, and I know Paul doesn't either. He always paints with dirty water. But you know what's amazing? You saw how much black and water I was looking at using. Look at the color of my water. Oh, let's show. Paul's looks like Riesling. <laughs> really bad Riesling. No, it looks like, like grapefruit. It looks like Fresca. It, yeah, that's what it looks like, Fresca. <laughs> okay, so let's take a little white. Pop it down next to the black, and we're gonna stir about twice as much black in there. You want like a gunmetal gray. It mm. almost looks black. Do -do -do -do. There we go. Okay. 
Okay. I'm going to do a little call. twist on this. Of course you are. <laughs> Just so a little. So go ahead and paint the head in, even though it might exactly match the background. It'll probably dry a little lighter anyway, so that's not a big deal. And let's see, I do end up covering all the black outlines, or you can leave just a tiny skinny bit, which I think my color is really dark. So I am going to leave just a tiny little skinny bit of the um, Huska outline because then it will show up against the background a little better. We do put a highlight on the head so it will stand out more than it does right now. Yeah, it almost looks like I just could have left it black. <laughs> but. Are you doing all the stripes or just the head? Nope, just, I left the other stripes black, but I do end up, um, I know I ended up painting black on them because I can see it on here, I think. Probably just correcting stuff. So we're still letting our yellow dry. I washed my brush. Our next little step while the yellow dries is we're going to paint some cute little flowers. I have them here. We're, we're not going to paint them. We actually use the Posca marker because they're so tiny that you'll want to. If you are comfortable using a little brush and you want to use white paint and do them that way, by all means, save your Posca marker paint. But I'm going to use the little marker. All right. Oh, what was that? Something shut off. No. Nope. Clicked. I thought no. I heard a camera click. Oh, maybe that's the ghost, finally. I heard it sounded like the roof. Hmm. There's a bar underneath us, so it could be anything. <laughs> Actually, there's not. <laughs> it's kind of like underneath us and one over. Same no, it, building, though. It sounded like, oh, look, there's the moon. Yes, I think we're in a... We are in a waxing... Gibbous. gibbous. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Weaning. Weaning. Waxing. Like, I don't remember. We looked last <laughs> night and can't remember. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and paint flowers. We're getting ADD here. We're artists, it happens. So I, I like to place a dot first because then I always have something to connect the petals to. And trace really light because your pen will splatter if you press hard. Just go ahead and do a little loop. And then another. I try to get five petals so that it follows the uh, the way things are in nature, like cherry blossoms. There's always Joy gave me a lecture once because I, well, it wasn't really a lecture. She's like, did you know there's no four petal flowers? I was always doing all my flower petals. That's not true. Okay. Plumeria from Hawaii are four petals. Okay. How do you, you're just like an encyclopedia. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do. I could be wrong. You can do, I did four, but you can do as many flowers as you want. I can see this one's already a bit bigger than that one. So that's fine. It's, it's a different, different painting. Uh, make a dot for the next one. This one I made with pointy leaves. So the shape is more like that. More like an almond shape. I'm going to try and brush this time. Oh, this one is going to go off the, off the little end of the wood a little bit. And because of the shape of this, I feel like I want to put another one in here or partial one. Probably defying nature's rules there, but you know, it looks like I put a lot of petals on this one. Now I'm going to do another over here. And like I was saying, make them the size you want. You can do different types of petals. And we're going to fill them in. If it's helpful, turn, turn it around. Let's see. I'll do a pointy petaled one here. I just don't have a lot Trace of room. light. I'm going to keep reminding you, I'll, I'll sound like a broken record, but you probably have, some of you have already noticed how these dragons splatter a bit. If that does happen, it is not a big deal. Just get some black paint on your little brush, touch it up. Or make it into a star later. Yeah. So again, I'm left with feeling like this needs another petal here because it looks weird to me. I'm going to do it. And it will probably look better. I only have room for three flowers. Okay. It's all right. I won't fire you yet. <laughs> well, I'm just, I mean, it's just going to get crowded. My bee is big. <laughs> Fill these in. Yours is Papa Bee. 
So they're going to be solid white, but feel free to use any color on your palette. Mix up some colors, make purple, use red, whatever you want to do. I just, for whatever reason, my, I guess I'll just call it the artist reason, chose <laughs> to paint them all white. Maybe because it was just easier with this pen. I hope you guys love working with these and save them, obviously, I know you guys will because I'll probably use them again for another kit eventually. But you can also use them on any of the acrylic paintings that you've done with us in the past because, or any that you do in the future, they don't even have to be art, you know, from us. They can be any, any, any painting you do. You can use this on your canvas to touch up or to use, if you need something super fine point that's pretty exact, do it. Okay, let's go ahead and give our yellow bits on the bee another coat of paint. What are you looking up? I see you're, you're trying to prove Joy wrong. I know you are. <laughs> I just did. See? He had to look up a plume. You always are so funny. <laughs> well, I made it make sure that I'm giving people the right information. If, if there was not, I would have been like, oops, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. What did you do before cell phones, before smartphones? I just BS'd and winged <laughs> Let it. me take you to the library, you know, I want to pull up this book. <laughs> I just winged it. <laughs> With a lot more confidence. <laughs> All right. So this looks way better with the second coat. And I did end up just using the exact same shade of yellow. I kind of like a nice soft buttery yellow for this B. It's so cute. I remember when our son, who's turning 20 next month, was little, he had a book that was called Bee Gets a Sweater, and it was, I think it was a spider that knit it was. several sweaters for the bee, and the bee kept turning them all down until finally, in the very end of the book, it knits a black and yellow striped sweater, and the bee was like, that's it, that's the one. I totally <laughs> it was forgot really about cute. that book. Yeah, I think we still have it. There are a few books that were so sentimental that I'm like holding on to them forever. Forever for my 20 year old baby. <laughs> How does that happen? Uh, we're just not going to talk about that. Because that means we're old too. Okay. Just looking, checking. I think right now would be a good time to paint. Now, this is where we're going to have to use this little brush and be careful because we didn't have a green Posca marker. That would have been a very expensive kit. Um, let's go ahead and mix a nice green color to paint a fun vine or stem that connects through all these flowers. And I'm going to pull the palette over. I've already washed my brush. I'll set my B aside here. And let's go ahead and mix yellow and blue. Let's try equal parts to start. That makes a really deep, deep... Uh, teal like deep teal green keep in mind though that that's going to look a lot brighter on the black than it does on the i white. might have mixed white in it let's see no i'm going to pull some more yellow in there look we got oregon ducks colors yay <laughs> and you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do something different here oh no going on i think i did mix a tiny bit of white in just a little bit. Going off script, yep. You rebel. <laughs> Not a lot of white. So here's the color it makes. That's really pretty. Avocado, kind of. A little darker than an avocado. Mm -hmm. Look at the light changing in here. I know. I was actually thinking I might go turn on the studio lights. Uh, oh, yeah, go ahead. If you think that'll lights. make a difference. There's also this one over here. Well, I, I don't know that it'll the make The ballroom a, lights. <laughs> not that it'll make that much of a difference of what we're doing, but... Yeah. We got good lighting in here for us for doing this. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to start now by connecting. So if you have a lot of paint on your brush from mixing, you'll want to do that trick I told you where you just kind of twist it. You pull, here I'll show it here, pull and twist on your palette. And then re-dip the tip of the bristles in fresh paint. So you have a, a nice little dot of paint on the very end of this. 
And I'm going to go, you can either pull down towards yourself, which is a little easier. Let's go right in the middle of this and pull down and there we go. I, I heard the roof do that thing again. I think it's just the, uh, you know. The building more, settling. <laughs> well, the air pressure changing in the building is it's really 110 years of settling. I'm going to go turn on the lights in the main studio just so it's not quite so like we're sitting in a spotlight. You just bumped something. <laughs> well, maybe it's just a floor wiggling wiggling the camera thing. Okay, so now I'm going to pull bottom of this one, pull down another vine, then you can make it kind of wavy, that's fun, a little whimsical. I didn't really have a lot of room to make that one very wavy, like this one's really fun. This one's just more straight, it's okay. Okay, now this one I'll just connect down here to this guy. It so it's like, like a sorry. it's like a big U-shaped vine that goes through that's kind of wavy. I just felt like we were just in the dark staring into spotlights and that might uh, didn't really change it much. Not a lot. <laughs> this is good. We now can see see how that's wiggling. I know, it's just this we need to get a different table. It's not that, it's the table. I don't know. Yeah. I'll argue with that that with you after we're done being live. <laughs> Let's go ahead and paint leaves. And they are just shaped like almonds. What else? You can see them on here. I just have okay. one, so I'll do one like on one side. And if you have room, do another. They don't have to be the exact same size. In fact, I sometimes I think it's better if they're not the exact same size. And you can tuck as many as you can fit on here. They're little almond shapes or something similar to that. If you want to do rounded leaves, you absolutely can. There's not a lot of room on mine. Let's see what I've got down here. Not a lot of room, I'll just tuck some in here. There. I could even put some lower down. Okay, it's cute. So cute. So cute, I'm gonna wash this brush. And I am going to come in I do see that I did the black because I wanted to eliminate these white outlines. So I'm going to take my littlest brush. What white outlines? The outlines on either side of the black stripes. See them oh, there? I see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So leave the tail alone and go ahead and paint over this. And here's what I'm doing. I'm brushing into the yellow, making this black stripe just a little bit bigger. But here, look how fuzzy it's looking now because of what I'm doing. Using the very tip of the bristles, pointy end of the brush. And you can pull it down into the one below it, but you don't have to. See on this one too. So that actor from yeah. that, he had been battling cancer. Oh, that's so sad. Apparently he was battling it at the yeah. time they filmed one of the movies. No. He was in like the end game and all that too, right? Yeah. No, stop. <laughs> what? I just went rinsing my brush. And had to... Having fun. I could clean up this right here. I've got a little bit where the yellow kind of came down just a bit. This is all going to dry before we do anything else to it. And we put white, fuzzy, like hairy. <laughs> I don't like using the term hairy. It just be fuzzy. Furry. Put fuzzy Furry. stuff on there. Let's wash our brush, set it aside. We are gonna go back to Posca marker. We're gonna paint stars, and then we'll put centers on the flowers, and then we'll be ready to finish the bee with the wings and the highlights and the tail fuzz. Okay, so what so are we doing So stars now? are super easy. Yeah, that seems like it would be. You're literally just going to touch the tip of the pen to the wood. Every once in a while, if you want to have one that's a little bigger, just carefully swirl it into a circle. I don't think I did that on any of these. No, I did not. They're all equal, exactly the same size. Equal. Pull that forward there. And you can see like the owl has tons and tons of stars only because I had such a small amount of space. I was like, I'm gonna load it up. <laughs> and put as many as you want or as few as you want. Paint your favorite constellation. Paint a shooting star if you are feeling real 
uh, if you're feeling very shooting starry, if you're feeling very um, like going off the books here. If you're feeling adventurous. Adventurous. Why did that word like go out of my head? Because I have not been feeling adventurous. I've been living vicariously through Animal Crossing. Last night I flew to another island. <laughs> How fun would that be? So tuck them in here between the little bits of the bee. And then I think that technically you would see them through the wings because they're kind of supposed to be see-through. But I do think that's going to make this look really crowded. I so think I'm not going to do that. The eye mm -hmm. bit, it'll yeah. confuse the eye. So mm -hmm. we're just going to break the rules of nature there. Sounds good. All right. And let's go ahead now. And the bee is pretty dry. Uh, at least mine is. But I, we do still have a little bit of time. Let's, let's paint the centers of the flowers any color you want. I, I use the brush. And I use the brush end. I know a lot of times I'm using the handle end, but these are super small. And I just paint a little circle. And you can do red, you can make pink. You know, maybe I'll do pink on this one. You can mix red and yellow to make orange. You can mix red and blue to make purple and throw some white in there to make lavender. Technically, all colors kind of come from these uh, primary colors. Sort of, because there are different like minerals and things that. Um, well, there's the whole new primary color theme theory too. Yeah. So the new, in fact, I'm going to talk about that real quick while I'm working here. Um, the new theory with primary colors. In fact, you're a little more up on it. You read up on it a little more, but instead of being red, yellow, and blue, it's very close but it's more like the printer colors. So cyan, magenta. And yellow. And yellow. So yeah. yellow's, yellow's got to stick around. It's the process colors is what yeah. they call it. So that's really interesting. I wonder what the old masters think of that. <laughs> well, I mean, if you get the results. Yeah. Rules are meant to be broken. <laughs> that is true. I mean, that's kind of how Monet got started. He broke the rules. He did not like traditional art theory and said, let's make my own. I'll do what I want. And did, so did he um, come up with like impressionism then? Kind of. There was um, like a group of artists that were impressionists. Yeah, he was the one that, you know, he never used black for one thing That's because right. he said so many of the uh, painting techniques of the era were based on black. Lots mm -hmm. of black, 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 black. And he's like, uh, black doesn't really occur in nature that much, so let's not paint with black. <laughs> As we're painting with black. <laughs> we're breaking the laws of nature tonight. Okay, so it's looking cute. We're going to finish it up now. Just a few little steps, and then we're going to move along to probably... I'm going to decide. Let's see. I'll decide by looking at what page is next. Okay, the owl is next. Let's On paint the, the owl. Page. We're, we're going to let it decide itself. So let's go ahead and grab our Posca marker. We don't do any more paint on this one. It's all Posca. And let's do something easy. Let's highlight this. I just do the oh. highlight on the sides of the head for the bee. So it makes it look shiny. I thought we were working on the owl. What? No, you didn't listen very good. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> That's all right. And then we're going to fuzz up this little tail. So I'm just going right over the black and kind of pulling towards myself, making little fuzzy lines like that. And then we're gonna finish the wings. They're not super complicated. They're kind of a lot like leaves. This is gonna connect and make a teardrop shape. So ignore this little guy first. So here's what I do. It's like you're mirror imaging this. Right back up. Be careful when you draw because of the little splatter that the pen tends to want to do. So you can pull down towards yourself or, or go up like I did on this one, either way. And then the little one, it just comes up. It's just a smaller wing, and it's going to connect to the side of this, kind of in the upper part, like that. My yellow is not dry. 
You can wait to do this part. That's all right. Dry yeah, if you have some parts of this that is not dry, like the black that we painted on or something like that, pause the video and hair dry it. You want it to be nice and dry. And then I'm going to go divide each of these original big teardrop shapes. So the main wing, I'm going to divide in half with a single vertical line. We don't do that with the little ones. And if you feel that you ever need another coat of the white, you did get some flowage going on here, you can uh, definitely go over, just retrace over. So all I do now is super easy. It's like you're doing an inverted V. So from this vertical line, you're just doing, like you're making a leaf. Don't you remember when you're kids and we paint leaves or draw leaves? They always look like that. And then for this one off to the side, just go ahead and make some vertical or sort of angled stripes. Boom, boom, I'm gonna have to wait to do that boom, until we're boom. done with the other ones because it's just picking up paint on mine. Frustrating. It's just carving through. <laughs> so we're done. We're done with this one. It's gonna dry. When it's dry, you can loop your twine right back through it, or if you prefer, you could like pick up a ribbon at a craft store. That would be cute too. So goodbye, B. We're gonna set you aside, and it's time for the owl. So pick out which of your two that you want to use for the owl face. I would recommend probably a larger one. Um, just well, it doesn't really matter. Hmm. This mushroom has a bit of it has quite a bit of stuff going on in the painting itself. These wood rounds I used for the originals are a little bit smaller. They were a different brand because I hadn't gotten these in yet when I designed them. Um, so let's go ahead and pick out which one of these, gosh, which one do I want to use? You know, I'm going to use a bigger one. This one. How are we looking? Good. Good. Okay. Well, we're almost an hour in. Okay, good. We're doing, we're doing good time waste. Okay. Hopefully these last two don't take an hour each. No, they won't. <laughs> you know, we did talk a lot too. We did. Talk we always about. talk a lot. Senor. Talk a lot. Okay, so this first one starts off with the shape. Are we so, Posca marking or Yeah, name? Posca marker from the very beginning. And it's like a heart that mm. has a rounded bottom. So that's the chin. Look at the I left a little gap all around. So let's go ahead and make our marker dots. So about a quarter inch down from this, make sure you have it lined up right, make a dot. That is where this is going to start, the point. And just, you can dot it out. The nice thing is we've got these sides to parallel. I'm gonna come all the way down, and literally, I've got a ring right under mine, so it's perfect. I'm just gonna trace that ring as I go up and around. One's gonna come out. Just try to try to do it as even as you can. Don't fret too much about it. All right. So it kind of looks like an apple. A lot like an apple, actually. Mine's not 100% center, but that's all right. I don't think my original was either. So we're gonna divide it in half with a dotted line. Go ahead. That is just a base for feathers that we put on later. And then we're going to make what look like smiling eyes. So these are not like perfect arch rainbow shapes. They're, they kind of go up. So if you notice, this, this corner doesn't come down to match that one. So it kind of looks like he's super smiley happy. So there's one. And then I just try to match it up on the other side, which is always a little challenge. Sometimes it's easier for me to turn it there. Now for what we do next is, it's kind of cool. Let's mark off, let's see, let's come up about, it's almost a half an inch. Let's make a little horizontal line here. That's where we want the beak to start, but we're going to connect these two down to that. Dot, 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 dot. So this is the inner corner. This is what creates the part of the bird that the beak forms out of. And their faces are shaped this way for 
uh, filtering noise into their ears so they can hear at night when they're flying around. Because I think these are ones that are like practically blind when they're flying around. You can Google that, Paul. <laughs> You're the owl expert. I'm, gonna go I'm, ahead. I'm not an expert. I'm going to um, go ahead and make this little sharp pointy beak. It might meet the chin or it might come short of it. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to step on your talons. <laughs> step on my talons. <laughs> okay, so now let's do the bottom side of the eye. And you can pull down from the outer corner. I find that works really good. They have round eyes, but they're just pointed on the edges usually. Some of them actually have full on round eyes though. Like I've seen. Their faces are different, like human faces are. Just ever so slightly different from each other. And we're done with the Posca for now. We're gonna go to paint. Okay, so we are going to mix this brownish color here. And that is uh, daffodil, ruby, and black. So daffodil and ruby is gonna make an orange. And then we're gonna add a little bit of black, just a little, to turn it kind of a rusty brown. Oh, my daffodil has got green in it. Let's see if I can work with it. I'm gonna plop this over here, add a little red till I get an orange. And then start off with just the tiniest bit of black because it will overpower it pretty quick. You can see already it's turning a nice burnt orange color. You need a little more. We, rather than being burnt orange, you want it to be more of a closer to brown than orange. This is pretty good. You can even, if needed, add a dot of white to it to um, change it up a little bit. Sorry, Paul. I didn't make quite enough. I can figure it out. You can see how it feels when I do your videos. It's all right. I <laughs> okay. trust you enough to make your own paint. <laughs> So they have this shading on the inner corner. It just goes under their eye and up the edge of the eye like this. I always think this part of the painting is pretty cool because it reminds me of like a Native American mask or totem pole. It reminds me more of like an African mask. Okay, we'll go with that. Yeah. And then under here, see how I'm flicking the brush down and getting real close so you end up with this kind of V shape through here. If it's not perfectly V shaped, don't worry about it. When we come back in with the white feathers, you won't even remember it. <laughs> so here we go. Looks like a sleep deprived owl right now. But they really do have this inner corner stuff going on. And we're going to also go around the top of the eye, almost like it has eyelashes. Now this gets like 90% of it gets covered up with white, but it's good to have under there because it does show a little bit. So yeah, think of this as like really Tammy Faye Baker eyelashes. Remember her, Paul? Yeah. <laughs> Big, thick eyelashes. And look at us, we need to make more paint already. I'll do that real quick. I think I put my eyes up too high. <laughs> it's funny how it changes the face just a bit. It's okay though because like I said, I've seen pictures. Of, I have a whole pin board devoted to um, owls and a lot of them are barn owls. This is on Pinterest and um, they are different. Their faces are all slightly different. So don't worry if you like end up with this funky stuff of the eye like I did. <laughs> We come back later with that marker and clean it up. In fact, I don't like how thick I ended up making this eye outline, so I'm just gonna cover it with some paint. There. One eye's a little squinty, no big deal. And then I'm gonna go down with this. I'm just gonna dot, just dot your brush down over this dotted line. I probably could have just done this without the white. I could have just done it with this brown instead of using white. So that wiggles when I wiggle my foot. Stop wiggling your foot. I'm sorry. <laughs> now I'm going to dot around the head here, dotting out our white outline. So the white outline was good here, gave us a good starting point, but we don't want it there forever. And this is going to partially cover it up. We come back later with some really dark. Just dot it on. 
Their feathers look like that. They're kind of dotted. They look like someone came in with a paintbrush and gave them little dots. One fun fact I found out about barn owls that I didn't know was that uh, the females have freckles on their chest and the males are pure white. So that was kind of cool. Okay, keeping on, keeping on. I had to make more paint, it's a tiny bit darker. I am not gonna worry about that at all. I'm Did totally I warn right. you that this goes through kind of an ugly phase? I'm Thank warning you. you now. Thank you. <laughs> I'm warning you now. It really does. Okay. So now if, if you need to go back and add anything more to anything, you can. But honestly, so much layering happens after we get the white on that you don't really have to worry about it right now. But what I want to do is I want to take this rusty brown I made right here. And you can see mine ended up just a, a bit darker than, than this one. Um, I'm going to add white to it. I need more wine. <laughs> How's that all turning out, Paul? I'm going to leave a little bit of this color just to reference because I do need to tap into that later. But this color should be end up being kind of a tannish, like latte color. It's definitely creaky noises in here tonight. <laughs> No wonder Kendall thought it was haunted. You know, your the wine bottle is blocking me. Oh. My view. I'm so sorry. It's blocking my view. <laughs> <laughs> I just needed it so I could fill my glass. Sorry, I was lying. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw the part, the head, around the face. So all we have now is the face. This part is very easy. It's basically, we're going to, let's come in from either side, here and here. And it almost looks like a Russian babushka doll, like one of those stacking Russian dolls. And it literally goes right through or over on top of the hole for the string. So think of this as being like a penguin. Right now it's like penguin phase. And let's color this in down to where we drew our white Posca line for the face. Doesn't have to be perfect, it can be a little messy. And then they, this part here is kind of where I, I mark off the chest right here is going to be white. And then this connects to the feathers, or the wings, I'm sorry. The head connects to the wings. So then you end up with a little tiny strip of black around the edge to put stars on later. So this one I figured out of all three would be the most challenging mentally and it's only because we're painting something with a face and that tends to get people a little shook. Totally normal. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Let's go ahead and remix, if needed, this rusty dark brown. So this time let's make it a little darker. So that was red, yellow, and a touch of black. So you want to add a little more black than before. Get it nice and dark, kind of cedar brown. Chestnut brown, I guess you could call it. There, oh, sorry, I'm not on camera. There we go. Nice, dark, kind of cedar brown. And I'm going to take that with my brush. I'm going to paint little dots using the very tip of the bristles, light touch, just tiny little touch to the bird head. They have these markings on the tops of their head and they're just feather patterns. It always to me it looks like someone came and sprinkled like some kind of cinnamon or something on their head. <laughs> 
if you look really closely, there's black, brown, and white tiny, tiny, tiny dots all over their heads. And it makes them look so cool. So you can bring it down on the wings. Oh, you're using a bigger brush. I got bigger things to fix. <laughs> no wonder you're pouring so much wine. Or is it because I'm pouring so much wine? <laughs> that could be. And right now, it is in that phase where we're just harshly judging our work because it does not look superb right now. <laughs> Speak All for right. yourself. So, right now, um, did I? What color do we do the beak? Oh, I missed the beak. Okay. I want to paint the beak. Probably this peachy or tan. I call it peachy, but it's not really peachy. It's a tan color. I have very little bit of that left. If you need more, just mix some white in your rusty brown you were just working with. The beak just needs to be a little lighter. Try and cover your white outlines. Oh, I've got too much water on my brush. So I'm gonna dab this with the towel. So the beak is a lighter color. Like the head. It could even be a pale yellowish. It's really in person. They're very, very pale, pale, pale yellow. Scary. <laughs> Scary looking thing. Mine kind of looks like a Jawa. <laughs> it looks like an owl. It totally looks like an owl. You know, I've painted these and sell them on my Etsy shop. Different owls. And I can take a little more time to be a little more detailed. So, because I'm not on camera. <laughs> and they're fun. They're fun. But someone always orders one, like, when I'm, like, on a busy project or something. I'm like, oh, now i got to make it. <laughs> okay. Um, what color did you use for the beak? It was just the color we painted around the head. It was that rusty brown color with white mixed in. I just grabbed this color. I'm just a... Uh, I don't know what it was, but... So I want to go over the heart shape with a dark color, almost black. It's just your rusty brown you've been working with. And probably most of us need to add just a touch more black. So I'm gonna make orange first with red and yellow. Deep color right here, that's probably pretty good. It's almost exact to what we had before. I just wanna make it a little darker because the white feathers flick over it and it looks really good. So I'm just gonna go around the heart. This this final little bit should cover any of your white Posca marks that show through. And you can do it down this dotted middle part too. It's really dark on the camera. No, I'm looking, I'm not looking at, on the camera I'm looking at. No, oh. I was just making a statement. Oh, I see. It's like, mine's not even on the camera. <laughs> so they're still in the not so pretty phase. Don't worry about that at all. It will climb through that hole. Scary owl right now. <laughs> it wasn't as pleasant as the bee. It doesn't go like the bee doesn't really go through any ugly phases. This goes through a little bit of a scary phase. Scary phase, scary phase. Okay, we're gonna use Posca marker now to paint the stars. So we'll take a break from painting. We'll do a little bit more painting in just a bit. But stars, we know how to do. They're nice and easy. It's gonna be 
quick with this because we're literally we have a quarter inch to work with or less you can flip this around if needed makes it a little easier to access this top strip of sky here just a tiny little touch to the wood with the tip of the pen white feathers so make sure this is dry wave it around really fast <laughs> dry it blow on it <laughs> use a hair dryer whatever you need to do but we are going to I'll talk real quick about the feathers so the feathers on the face of the owl are uh, they're shaped and they go in different they go in this certain direction because that helps filter sound into their ears along with their face shape and so at the bridge of the beak area, they come together. If you, were, if you were to look down at the top of the head of an owl, you would see they come together like this. And it just, it filters the noises across their face and into their ears, which are hidden under the feathers. So that explains why this looks like this. And then above the eye, they're gonna go out and they just gradually go out. And then finally under the chin, they're more vertical. And this one too, so it's just like whoop, whoop. You can make the noise if you want. Whoop. <laughs> and then we, uh, right now the eyes look scary because they're outlined in white, but we are going to actually paint black and, and fix that all up. So let's get our marker. This should be dry enough. I know mine is. And let's start with the nose. So here I'll show you a picture. This is what we're starting with. We're going to work going upward as we, um, and then we meet this side too, other direction. Then we'll put some feathers on the chest. So right here, whether it's easier for you to pull down towards the eye or to go up towards the bridge of the, I don't want to call it a nose, the beak. <laughs> I tend to like to go from that part inward. Don't worry about this area right now. Using the very tip of the pen, very tip of it, so holding it vertically, You'll get a nice fine line. And usually I'll have to fill in some more feathers after the first round, but they should both meet pretty close to the middle. You can use your paintbrush anytime. So you could come in with that wet paint that's come out of your Posca marker and brush it around with your brush. Any spot you need, but make sure you wash your brush off when you're done. And now at the beak, there are short little feathers that hang, you can see them here. They hang over the top edge of the beak here, like whiskers. <laughs> now he looks like the diabetes guy. He just died. <laughs> He did, Wilford Brimley. He just died like a week ago. Do you remember like, 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 this was a our house? Like, two weeks to watch ago. That. Boy, we're just talking about all these people that died. We're Dad, turning into our parents. We're turning into our parents. Okay, let's do the chest. So we want to leave the, the brown outline of the face pretty much intact. So I'm not covering that. I'm coming right up to it. How are you getting such fat lines? Fat lines? Yeah, with Let's your... see your pen. You know, you need to, to get some ink flowing out of it. So, or uh, I say ink, but it's paint. So definitely push it up and down several times so you get until a little drop comes out. There you go. Now do it. So yeah, if you're not getting a good enough amount of paint out of your pen, make sure that you depress it up and down. Sometimes even until a drop of paint comes out. Like if you use your palette, then you can reuse it. And you might have to come through and fill in. This dries so fast. Okay, now the face is gonna go from scary to scarier. We're gonna move to this direction, which means we cover the whole face with feathers 
And just like I showed you, we went in this, this part that we did here, this part here was probably the trickiest. The rest of this is pretty easy. We're going to go up almost like eyelashes and all the way around until finally our feathers go vertical. So the edge that we did with the dark brown, you slightly overlap it. So that's what they look like. If I had a picture, I could pull up and show you. I only have a painting on the floor, but it's not the greatest owl painting of it of mine. So here around the eyes, I filled it in pretty solid white. You can see that. And so I'm gonna do that now. Just go right along there and see how I filled it in pretty solid white. There's no strands of black mixed in there. It just looked better. And coming real close to the eye, but again, we can come back close to it with shorter pen strokes. I'm not gonna worry about this area too much right now. I'm just doing shorter, little whiskery pen strokes as I get down here. You're having a rough time, aren't you? Be careful, be easy on that pen. <laughs> I'm about ready to kill this pen. <laughs> Go get a different one. Might be user error. Well, I've never used them before. So I do like, <coughs> I do like, I left this little bit of black that kind of helps outline the beak. If that doesn't happen with you, and it didn't with me on the original, you can see I came right up. Um, you can add a dark brown or black outline with your brush later on. Let me try your pen. Or you try mine. Okay. Whoa! I flicked it. I shook it when I probably shouldn't have yet. I'm going to actually shake this really good. I think it's, my, it's, not, my, it's not the pen. Okay. Let me have my magic pen back. It takes a while to get used to, so you, some of you guys might be having trouble, like Paul. Do we want to show your owl to see? You got paint on this. Well, I mean, we're painting on paint. <laughs> I probably did too if I were to do this with my... Okay, let's continue on with this one. Going up the bridge of the nose, so you should just end up with a, a small semblance of a line right here. And I promise we'll touch up this area. Gosh, after you, you know what, I think you're uh, pushing too hard. I'm not pushing hardly at all. That's weird, because it's like, it's making the tip of the pen a little raggedy. What have you done? Like, I can't actually push less hard. You're cursed. So there, uh, going up eyelashes, big white eyelashes. I, a lot of times, I'll turn this to pull towards me easier. As I get along the edge of the eye, it's going pretty close to horizontal. I'll touch this up real quick just by coloring it in. And now. You're right, it does sort of resemble like an African mask right now. I think my problem with mine is that I'm still fighting the amount of liquid I put on the... Could be. So I did uh, go over the edge of my beak just a bit, but I can fix that easily. So your guys' probably look as haggard as ours do at this moment. <laughs> just like the original. Right there. I mean, it looks pretty close to the same. Now I'm going to bring some of this white up over this area. And I'm going to clean up along there. So it's solid white along here. So I'm reducing the size of this little B. Because we are going to add it back in. A little bit lighter color. <laughs> so 
So the I um yeah, I had some eye issues. You can see one eye is a little squinty now because I actually got some white in it. Now if needed, and I did this on my original, you can use your little brush and a little bit of white paint for any areas that you might have that feel like there's too many dark gaps. You do want that around the edges. So you, that's how you get that kind of spiky, fluffy look around the edges. But you maybe don't necessarily want that in here, in some of these middle areas where it would be technically be a lot more solid white. So this works really good to help with that. So again, leave the edges nice and spiky and fluffy. You are shaking the whole table. Sorry. And now we are going to shade, add some shading back under the eyes. So you see how this one's nice and light, and this one's a little darker. We're going to lighten this area up just a bit. So I want to use the color that we originally put around the outside, which is uh, rusty brown with white. So that was red, yellow, and a little bit of black, and we add white to it. You might already have some made. Between the two of us, we have demolished every last bit of paint on here, except for black. You're shaking the table. <laughs> it's okay, I'm not painting right now. I am. Okay. Pull this over. So if you see our palette, it looks really gross right now. This is the color I'm aiming for right here. So that was yellow and red, make orange. Add some black to turn it into chestnut brown or something similar, close. I can tell you're frustrated with your owl. I want to kill that Posca marker. <laughs> it just made a mess for me. Use paint. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Okay, so now I'm gonna add white to this. So you get that tan color again, or something similar. It does not have to be exact. We just want a, a little lighter shading under those eyes. Because right now it's a little bit too dark, so this is like our second coat. Go ahead and uh, cover up the outline of the eye. That's still, I need to add a little white back into that. It's a little bit dark. It's pretty close to the original color. That, that's perfect. So let's have a look here. So I came up the base of the eye and just shaded outward till my, my brush is like kind of running out of paint right now, which is perfect. That's how you get that soft blending. Just let it run out of paint. Then you work on the other side, let it run out of paint. Sleepy owl, very tired, didn't get enough sleep. And if you need to retouch up this line, you can, but at mine you can still, you can tell, even though this one has a, a sharper line, you can tell in this one that the feathers grow together that way, so I'm not gonna touch it. Um, I do wanna touch up the very tip of the beak, just a bit, and then if you need better blending through here, wash your brush. And use a little bit of white. And just at the edges where the tan color meets the white, just blend the tiniest bit of white in there just to kind of soften the edges. And that's only if needed. On the shading color, the inner corner, if you want to create what looks like a light source, you could bring that shading down on this side of the beak so it looks like there's a light, light source is over here and it's casting a shadow down here, but it, the only reason I said that is it kind of looks like I attempted to do that there. 
but I don't really like it on this one, so I'm going to bring my white back in there, soften it up. Now, if you need to re-outline the beak, use your dark rusty brown or black and just come along either side of it and clean it up. Very tip of the bristles of the brush, small outline. And we are almost done with the owl. I did some weird shading here on the chest and it was just this tan color and it was the same color we were just working with under the eyes. And to be honest, I didn't like it and I don't know why I never fixed it, but I still don't like it. I'm gonna leave this one white, but feel free if you wanna brush some in there, you can. Um, I'm gonna take and wash my brush and I'm going to go with solid black. Just a little tiny drop of black on the tip of the bristles. And that's what I'll use to, working from the inside out, just reshape the eyes. Because after all of this, they've kind of lost their shape a little bit because we have been painting around them. If you need to add a little water to your color, you can do that. I just thin it out a tiny bit because it's gotten thick as it sits here on our palette. And if you thin it out just a little bit, it's not too watery and you'll get a better brush stroke out of it. So one eye looks pretty good, the other one's still pretty squinty. This one's gonna be the challenge. I always have, because I'm right, I assume it's because I'm right-handed, I have a little bit of trouble with whatever is placed on the left side of whatever I'm painting. It's just always a little awkward for me. Only I was ambidextrous. So I'm kind of just sliver by sliver fixing that eye up. It's not 100% perfect. It doesn't have to be. Just like human beings, their faces are probably a little different symmetrically. Okay, so now if you feel like you need any more white paint mixed in there uh, to soften anything up, like some of those feathery bits. Eh, our white is gross. Don't worry, Paul. We're done with the owl and like a couple strokes of Posca marker. <laughs> I'm going to use my Posca. I'm going to add a little shine on the beak doesn't matter which side unless you've got a light source picked so like if you had a light source coming in here it would be obviously the shine would be on that side but I'm just putting it on the left just because and I see a couple spots I might touch up I might touch that up later after the video is over and I can give these away as a gift so I want to do in the right upper upper right corner of the eye I'm gonna do a little scoop that just it's a highlight and it kind of Fall, it's inside the black part, but you can see how already it makes it look a little more rounded. I'm going to do one over here too. Why did I do them opposite? Because right now it looks cross-eyed to me. But I think it's because I did one matching on the inner corner too, that it doesn't end up looking super cross-eyed. And that is the owl. If there's anything you need to touch up, like maybe you want to refresh the outline around the face, you can do that. I do like having the feathery, um, soft stuff show around the, the outside of the face, though. So that is the owl. We are now moving on to the mushroom, which is super easy and fast. About half the time as this one was, probably. Get a sip of whatever you're sipping on. I'm going to the bar. <laughs> It's a face. You always you do amazing mountains and landscape, but faces are like a little I bit of a challenge for you. Not usually. I mean, not to that extent. It's, there's something like the grain of the wood on mine just was fighting me the whole time. <laughs> yeah, that could be because you, maybe you know maybe it works better when you have the solid paint on there. See, you just went off the you went off the the books and look what happened. <laughs> Mushroom time. Okay, flipping on over. This one's, like I said, pretty easy, fun to do. And we're gonna draw the mushroom out first, and then we color it in and go from there. So 
So uh, I like to draw the cap first and I'll show you the picture on the instructions. So it's like we draw the cap first and then we draw a little mustache under it and then the nice rounded stem. These are those poisonous mushrooms you do not want to eat when you're putting them in nature. I can't remember what they're called. Toadstools. Toadstools. Really? Oh yeah, they're just called toadstools, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I figure out where the, the loophole is and I kind of try to line it up that way. This one's a good half inch under, but it, you can make it as tall as you want. You could do two tiny ones. You could do a, a medium sized one and a tiny one. You guys can have fun with this. But I'll, I'll do it like this one just so you're guided through the exact same one. Drop down about half an inch, make a dot. That's going to be the top of our mushroom cap. And I just make a rainbow shape. You can dot it out. I know I'm drawing it, but definitely dot it out. You'll find less splatter to clean up. So a little rainbow shape. And then it's going to curve out and flip outward and come back. And I just kind of round this like this. And because we paint red, solid red over this, you can reshape it however you want. Like if you wanted it to go way out, it's not going to hurt anything. You can just kind of make it more fun. And then in the middle, let's start with one little vertical line, just so we have the, a middle marked out. And I'm going to give it a little mustache on either side of that line. A little shaggy mustachio. And the stem is literally, it's shaped a lot like a teardrop that's missing the top, the pointy top. So it's just going to come under here and round down. You can make it really um, over exaggerated if you want. It just comes right down to meet the bottom of this round. So this is the problem I'm having with my marker look when I draw. Yeah, I think it's, I think you're. I think it's the stain. I think you need a solid coat of paint. Yeah. Sorry, Paul, but you screwed yourself. <laughs> but they look cool. Like, look at your bee. The bee looks cool. I like it with the, the lighter background, but I bet that's what it is. I bet it's... It's gotta be something. Yeah, because you used my pen and same thing. Let's color this in, guys. I guess we don't necessarily need to do this because... I give it a pretty solid coat of white. But you know what, let's do it. Let's cut out a step. Let's just color this in white. And then if you've lost kind of the shagginess of your mustachey thing, you can flick it outward. It's kind of cute, like it's wearing a little fuzzy collar. And then we're gonna leave our mushroom alone for just a bit, put your cap on your pasta so it doesn't dry out. And it's paintbrush time. We're gonna take some grass and then this fun little fern and leafy thing over here. So, let's see, I do have some yellow and blue left somewhere on this palette when two artists use it. Look at that. Okay, so I'll scrape off a little yellow. I want to make the same green or very similar to what we did earlier. So I'll just mix it side by side. That was a little more yellow than blue. And then I added just a touch of white. The white will brighten it up and um, add to the opacity of the whole thing. I don't, I think it's your, I think it's the wood, Paul. You think but it's not even drawing on this. Go open another one. I'm not going to worry about it anymore. I'm just going to paint. <laughs> You're getting so frustrated. It's Friday. We have another video on Monday, and that's Paul's um, mountain sunrise painting. Oops, I went a little too late here. This can be the first mountain I teach. Is it really? Yeah. No way. I saw someone message they were interested in Zen Mist in the last one you did. I don't know if you saw that message. Uh, I saw, yeah. I responded. I am not turning out with a good green because I added too much white. And now, like, trying to go back and fix it all up is, mm, this, this actually is okay. Now that I add a little more yellow. So, again, from mixing the paint, you're going to end up with a big glob on your brush. We don't want a big glob. Let's twist it off or just wash it and start over. But I, I like doing this and then you don't have to, you can use this paint 
and you don't have to clean your brush all off. So I'm going to redip tip of the bristles in the green and I'm going to start by painting grass. Little short brush flicks, very light, light pressure on the brush. And you can make this grass different lengths. There's no HOA here, it's out in the woods somewhere. So you can have some that are taller. It just kind of scoops up the side here. And then on the other side, so it, see how it's kind of hugging the mushroom? This one goes really fast. It was the fastest out of all three. It was the very first one I designed. And then I, I did like three owls, I have to say. I did, I'll, I'll be honest here. I did like three owls and I was so frustrated until finally this barn owl. I didn't want to do a barn owl because I feel like I do barn owls so often that it's like overdone. But barn owl just wanted to be there. <laughs> so it was the one that turned out really good. Okay, let's make this, it's like a fiddlehead fern. And those are the ones that they kind of come up and they curl. So a lot like our bee antenna we did. We're gonna curl it this way towards the mushroom. It's just a little bit bigger version of that bee antenna. So I'm gonna come up, follow the curve of your round. It looks really nice to do that. And then just twirl it in tight. I have heard you can fry and eat fiddlehead ferns, although I've never tried them, but I am fully intrigued. I would love to try them. And then for the actual fronds, they're pretty easy. It's just a, let's see, I just literally do little scratches of the brush going out, kind of slightly upward. You can do taps or scratches, whatever, whatever works. When I say scratches, I'm talking about like what we did on the with the yellow and we're kind of making fuzzy brush strokes. That's what we want here, fuzzy fern. As we get up in the curl, I'll talk about that when we get up there. I'm getting up there pretty quick. So I'm at the top already and I'll, I'll work on these ones that are on the back side because they're pretty easy. They just go right off into the sky. It's the inside part ones that are a little tricky. So I'm getting doing these a little shorter. That's exactly how they look. They kind of tuck in at the top. And then under here, again, shorter. Just maybe a little hint of one. There. So the fiddlehead fern on my new one is a little bigger. Big and bold. And then on this other side, we're going to do a vine that is basically exactly like the vines that we did on this, maybe more leaves involved. It also will just curve up and follow the curve of the round. So what this is doing is it's, it's framing the mushroom. The mushroom is like the center, um, like star of the show. So that, that's what purposely why I designed it that way. Just kind of like, ah. My clouds parted and the ray of sun came down on top of this poisonous mushroom. And then I just do those little almond shaped leaves on either side. I don't really have room down here for one. If you need to mix a drop of water with your paint, do so. Just make sure it's not too watery. Just you want it fluid, but you don't want it super duper watery. At the top of this, I believe it's just one, yeah, one single leaf that points upward. I've got room to do another set here. Smaller ones, anyway. So yeah, at the top, just do one single almond-shaped leaf that point, points kind of skyward or up towards your, the hole. It's drilled through this. And now let's wash our brush and we're going to use bright red. We're going to paint over our mushroom cap. If I remember correctly, this one does require a couple coats of paint. So we'll, we'll paint one coat first. 
and then we're gonna let it dry while we work on something else and then we'll come back and paint a final coat. So you do end up covering your Posca outlines, although it wouldn't be wrong or a big deal to leave them if you like that look. can see already how fast this one goes. Are there ever mushrooms on Animal Crossing? I'm gonna just reference Animal Crossing all night. Um, no, so but it hasn't excited. been the right time of year. Oh, okay. That's right, they do kind of follow the seasons sometimes. They do 100%. Which is way cool, because the kids will learn a lot, well, and adults will learn a lot about seasonal items. So I do some berries along here, and I just do little groupings of three, and you just dot the brush. If you want to use the handle of the brush, you can, but these are really tiny, so I find that the, if you just dot the very tip of the bristles, it works perfect. This is probably a plant I made up. I do that a lot. <laughs> When you're painting and you're the artist and you're dictating this work, you can make up all that you want. So it's kind of a cross between some kind of leafy stem and holly. <laughs> Washing the brush now. And we're going to shade the side of the mushroom in blue. So our light source is right here, our crescent moon. And so it's casting light this way, which makes this really bright. And this is gonna be shaded. We wanna make a really pale blue with white and our sapphire blue or your primary blue. I had some over here earlier when I painted a middle of a flower on the bee. It's pretty light, so I would err on the side of making it too light. Lighter than sky blue, very pale. Because if you do it too dark, it can be a tough one. It can be a little too high contrast. We just want a soft shading. This might be too light. We'll find out. I'm gonna twist my brush and pull it, and get off excess paint. And I'm going to start with the shading the mustache part. Kind of under, like the cap is gonna cast a shadow there. I do feel like a little bit darker blue is necessary here, or at least I'll prefer it a little more. So come right up to the where the cap and mustache meet. And then I follow the curve of this. So in fact, I'm going to almost divide it in half and come like this. And then, so it's like I drew a J. And then I'll just shade this one side here. Not a big space to shade. And the cool thing here, I'll show you a little blending trick, extra credit. I can leave it like that and it looks just fine. If you wanna learn a little bit about blending shading, I'll wash my brush, this is still a little bit wet, and I'll use just the tiniest little tick of white on the brush. And I'm gonna come in right at the edge where the blue and white meet and just brush a little of that wet white into the <laughs> nearly dry blue. And you can see how it softens the edge of that shadow and makes it look so much better. And it's super easy to do. Your mushroom cap might be dry enough and ready for a second coat of red. I know mine is. If yours is not, just continue working on what you're working on and give it that second coat in just a bit when it's drier. Let me know if you guys think that this would be a fun project for October, for Halloween, because we've done these before where one has like a haunted house or Jack Skellington's face, or a um, 
jack-o'-lantern I've done. And if you guys really want to do that, we totally can, or I can do a canvas or one of the birch panels. Let me know in the comments because I need your help designing paintings sometimes I get. Like after doing so for nine years designing paintings for Van Gogh, I kind of run out of ideas. So please help me out. I washed my brush and I set it aside and that's actually um, probably the last time we used a paintbrush throughout these entire little um, wood circles. We're just going to use Posca marker now. Mushroom cap needs to dry before we do anything else to it. We're going to take Paul's favorite marker <laughs> and let's go ahead and draw the two flower shapes here and here just because we'll get them out of the way and then we can do all kinds of stars around them and the moon. So I, I always do the circle first or, or a dot where I want the center of the flower to be. They don't have to be perfectly lined up. In fact, it's probably better if they're not. This one is perfectly lined up. And then you could do one like with the round petals and one with the pointed more almond shaped petals. Or you could do both with the pointed petals like I did here. I'm going to be a little different. There's one. Press light when you do this. Sometimes it's helpful to move your round like I'm doing. I find that way easier. These pointy petaled ones are they end up kind of frumpy <laughs> when I do them. And look, no matter what I try, they ended up looking like they're exactly right across from each other. No biggie. I will live with that. That is not a, a wrong thing. Color those in. You can use paint. You can do them any color you want. Or just keep it simple and do the white. While I'm doing this, I'll talk to you about the little crescent moon we put on there. You can see there. Uh, nine years of teaching crescent moons. We teach the Van Gogh Starry Night a lot, and it has a crescent moon on it. And I always tell students to not worry, because 90% of them will end up with a full moon. Super easy to just turn it into a full moon if you end up with a strange looking crescent moon. Even mine's a little strange looking, but this is a strange looking painting. It's very whimsical. So a not so hot crescent moon is totally fine. And I don't, I have less room to work with here. So I might actually move mine just a tiny bit. Um, you don't have to do a crescent moon. You can do a full moon. You can do um, a um, uh, gibbous moon. Um, I'm thinking here. A skinnier crescent. <laughs> All the moon phases. Waxing or waning. <laughs> whatever you want. Or you can just leave it without a moon. But when I do a moon, I always start with a well, crescent moon. I start with a C. I have the students start with a C because you can work with a C. To keep it from becoming a banana moon, this is the most important part that uh, I'll ever give you about painting a crescent moon. Leave these ends a single skinny line. Just stick in the middle. See that? There you go. It's not so much of a banana. This one is kind of banana-ish. And I'll fill that in. Worst case, you wait till it dries, paint black over it, or paint a full moon. But mine, I like my new one better than, the, than that original. So I'm going to keep it. Now I'm going to paint little dot stars everywhere. So now we know Posca markers like a nice smooth base underneath. Oops. Technically there wouldn't be stars there because that's... <laughs> I don't know why I did that. That's funny. This is like a circle. This is not right, but you know what? It's my own little world. I can, I can leave it. Uh, yeah, so Posca markers. Nice smooth surface. It's probably best. Uh, so having that paint that we painted on here definitely worked better, as Paul found out, rather than a stain. But it has ended up looking pretty cool with the stained background. Yeah, kind of. 
<laughs> this is how we learn these things though, you know, just like the old masters. They had to experiment. You can use these uh, to paint, um, like I know at Blick they had on display skateboard decks, which I think would be super fun to paint. Oh, putting my cap on them, I don't need to. Um, let's go ahead and paint the dots on the mushroom, but only if this is dry, like 100% dry. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a pink Posca marker, which will take a little bit to fix. Now, you can do um, your own size of dot. Like, I did pretty big ones here. This time, I think I want to put some more on, so I'm going to make them a little bit smaller. But be sure that you do the occasional half dot, because you want it to look like it goes around the other side. And you can scatter them wherever you want. Little half dot here and there. I guess we didn't really show the gills of this mushroom, but it's, you know, this little wood round is only so big. That worked, that looked cute. If you've got room and you want to do a tiny dot, like a shine on each of these berries, you can do that. But keep, keep in mind your light source is the moon, so that it would be on the side facing the moon. And they're probably just going to kind of mix in with the stars and look like stars. I can tell already, mind you. And then I will want to give my flowers centers. So pick a color, any color. Oh, all our paint is so nasty and dry, but I do have a little orange here. It's just so orange it is. I used yellow on that original, but you can do whatever you want. You can even do black centers. Sometimes, like here, look at this, you can do like a dotted circle. And you know, some of the flowers have that, probably most of them. It's pollen and stuff. And then all you have to do is wait for them to dry, thread your twine or ribbon, whatever you want to use, through the top here. Drill the hole bigger if needed. This is the twine that came with them, or jute string, whatever they call it. Just tie a little knot in the top. Here we go. Cute, very um, fun, and my daughter would call them cottage core. Probably that's like a new thing, cottage core. I looked it up on Pinterest. I think I'm. I love cottage core. <laughs> it's woodsy and kind of prairie. Like some of the cottage core clothes are maybe like the prints, the calico prints, and like little house on the prairie and all kind of things. That's as Off good topic. as that owl's going to get. <laughs> All right, let's move Paul's into the picture. Now, he remember he had some challenges because I did of... okay with the other two. It's just the owl, something about it. The... <laughs> Do you know what? Your owl kind of looks like something from Star Wars, It, which is cool. You love Star Wars. I don't know what it looks like. It does not so look good. So here's the bee. No, he did the, the stain in the background, and we found working with that that the uh, Posca pen just wasn't smooth going on top of that. As you heard us complaining about the whole time. <laughs> That's the best I can do. Just wookie. <laughs> even when I came wookie. back with the brush, mm -hmm. trying to use a brush, it wasn't working. Yeah. Okay. Well. This right. just turned into this big muddy mess. It's all right. It still looks. It looks very like Paul creature-ish. Kind of. <laughs> it doesn't have that jubilation that my wookie had. Your wookie was fun. <laughs> all right. Let's go back to looking at the screen. Ready? Ready. What? Hey. <laughs> Hope you guys had fun. That was great. Um, they took probably a little bit longer than they had planned, but I don't know how long. Right it? about two hours. Okay, that's just, good. Just that's shy good. of two hours. About so hour and a half, two good. hours yeah, is yeah, about yeah. all we like to take. Um, let me know in the comments any other things you'd like to do that are like this. Ideas, you know, oh, I don't want to paint. Someone suggested a snowy owl the other day. Um, I love cr critters. <laughs> I love forest critters and... We just and had an all uh, kinds uh, of Alexandra said hi. Hi, Alexandra. Hi. <laughs> Good to have people saying hi when they're on. That's yeah, a, it's kind of, it was a fun Friday night for us. It was fun. 
I got a little frustrated, but I still had fun. Yeah, you still had fun. I'm going to try a pasta marker on yours and see if it's just like... Go for it. <laughs> see if I it's honestly just that don't... I'm used to using them. I don't know if it's the particular round or the... I doubt that's it because they're the same as mine. I, I don't know. Don't know. It was interesting. It was interesting. But anyway, so we'll see you guys on Monday. Monday, yeah, and, we'll be doing uh, a, a mountain scene. Yep, and I'm looking forward to that one. Clouds, that gorgeous pink Ooh, and red clouds. clouds. And, and there's actually a new technique uh, in that one that we've never used before. Um, that's really cool, and I think you'll like it. It's, okay. it's kind of a, just kind of give a little teaser. One of the things I've always thought was a difficult thing to do was to get a sky to get that nice little kind of like lighter horizon tone without it um, feeling very thick paint. Cool. So, cool. And, and blending is always a challenge when we do those things. We'll so. talk about that Monday yeah. for sure. And make so I'm sure excited you just about have your, your uh, five colors ready, Yep. towel brushes, uh, all three brushes for that one, and um, canvas. And I, if I remember right, without checking the instructions, it's very minimal amount of yellow when you set up your palettes. Okay. So. Minimal yellow. Well, minimal yellow. So. so if you just are stumbling across us and um, haven't seen us before, uh, we do have a subscription box kit. We yep. ship all the materials to you. So basically everyone who subscribes got all this stuff and then with the uh, the printed instructions and the, vid the video obviously and, and we do this together live. So you can find more information at gobox.com mm -hmm. and that's Spelled G O G H B O X. Like Vincent, like Vincent Van Gogh. And uh, if you want to support us via Patreon or buy us a coffee, those links will be on here at some point. We'll the, throw them in the description. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the description box. Um, Make sure you like us. Like us. Subscribe. subscribe. You can click the bell if you want to get notifications every time we post. We're, we're starting to creep in on that 1,000 number. Ooh, we'll have to throw a little party when that yeah, happens. We might be a couple months away from that one yet. Yeah, you never know. It's creeping up there pretty quick. It's creeping quick. up quicker than I was expecting it to. <laughs> Me too. So I'm glad Which you guys are finding fun. us. Which is always fun. Glad you guys are finding us. Glad you're painting and having fun and watching the videos. Our two minute videos are just uh, basically Paul takes, um, so not the live videos, but he takes the filmed videos that we do and he edits it down to two minutes. And those are really cool to watch because you see start to finish a painting completed in two minutes. So it's low commitment. You can sit there for two minutes and watch it. He pairs it with pretty cool music and those are fun to see and they're, they're always posted your, on here too. I did do your lady bear. Oh, cool. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I did see that. I saw mm -hmm. that. And yeah. the tiger, that was fun. Yep. We do have a kids crate subscription. Yeah. Uh, they're obviously more kid friendly <laughs> projects. And um, yeah, ha I'm glad you guys are having fun with this. Let us know any questions in the comments or uh, anything that was tricky for you. You already know it was tricky for me. <laughs> you already know. I was, was not bashful about Paul. expressing my frustration, so. <laughs> I think this is it's, nice. Yep, yeah, I just I'm feel like, put it on a string where it is a necklace. I feel like it just needs to dry for <laughs> it probably needs to dry for a day or so, and then yeah. come back and touch it up. <laughs> okay, we will see you guys Monday. Monday. Bye. See you later. Whoop.